Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the AP Chemistry 2025 free response question number one. Check out my website, MrAiden.com. This is the new exam that just came out. You can see this is question number one. It starts off with a mass spectroscopy data. And you can see it says that magnesium 24 is 79%. The magnesium 25, magnesium 26 are approximately equal. So we took 100%. We subtracted 79%. We got 21%. We divided that by two. Each one is 10.5%. And you make those little marks on the mass spectrum, probably worth one point, which moves us to part number two. It's asking us to describe the difference in atomic structure between magnesium 25 and 26. Obviously, these are isotopes. They have the same number of protons in the nucleus of the atoms. But magnesium-25 has 13 neutrons. Magnesium-26 only has 14 neutrons. Again, probably worth one point for your answer. It moves us on to dissolving magnesium nitrate in water. You can see it says that the magnesium plus two is being attracted by the polar water molecules. And they're going to Coulomb's law, that force equals KQQ over R squared. And the first thing they wanted to know was, why did magnesium plus two have a greater attraction to the water than the sodium plus one? And first, they wanted you to explain it with relative charge of the ions. Well, magnesium has a positive two charge. Sodium has a positive one charge. Where does that positive charge come from? It comes from the nuclear charge, the number of protons. And so since sodium plus one has a greater nuclear charge, has a greater positive charge, positive two, it results in greater Coulombic attractions to the polar water molecules. Question number two is asking about to look at this in terms of the relative radiuses of the ions. And magnesium plus two and sodium plus one, the valence electrons of both are located in the N equals two energy level, the principal quantum energy level. But since magnesium plus two, again, has a greater nuclear charge, it has a smaller ionic radius then the sodium plus one, that smaller atomic radius results, since it's on the denominator of F equals KQQ over R squared, results in greater Coulombic attractions with the water molecules. Part C is asking us to find the pH of the solution in beaker two. Beaker two is 2.8 times 10 to negative four molar of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, which means we need to find the pOH first by negative logging the OH minus, that gives us 3.55. We subtract that from 14 to find the pH of this strong base of 10.45. Part D, we finally combine these two solutions together, and they want us to calculate the magnesium plus 2 concentration after the two solutions are combined, but before the reaction takes place. You could have used M1V1 equals M2V2. Uh, I did it by taking the molarity of magnesium plus 2 times the volume of 0 0.035 liters, 35 milliliters, to find the moles. Then I divided by the total volume to get 7.62 times 10 to the negative 4 molar of magnesium plus 2. You're going to need that number later on. So watch out in part E. Part E, we're looking at magnesium hydroxide dissolving into magnesium ions and hydroxide ions. It gives us a KSP. You can see number one, the KSP, we're trying to write the expression. That's the concentration of magnesium plus two times the concentration of hydroxide squared. It's a one to two ratio. And so we could, given the KSP, find the molar solubility, but they didn't want us to do that. They actually had us do a Q problem. So we had to find the reaction quotient, the Q, by plugging in your magnesium concentration from part D, 7.62 times 10 to negative four, you had to plug in the OH minus, which is what they gave you, 1.65 times 10 to negative 4, square that number. We get 2.07 times 10 to negative 11th, which is a larger value than your K. That value is larger than the K. The Q is greater than the K. And if the Q is greater than the K, the reaction will shift to the left, forming more precipitate since there's a greater amount of concentration than the required molar solubility to form a precipitate, we will get a precipitate. And part F, they add a strong acid, HNO3. As the student adds a strong acid, what's it gonna do? It's gonna react with the OH minus particles, removing them from the saturated solution. The removal of OH minus particles 
results in a Q that is less than the KSP, shifts the reaction towards the products, you can see the magnesium hydroxide solid is going to become more dissolved. It's going to increase the solubility. The, it will decrease the amount of undissolved solid magnesium hydroxide. And all of the questions looks like it's worth one point each for every single part of that. Ten points for free response question number one. I'll have the other ones posted shortly. Thanks, guys. Bye.